Hey guys, welcome back to Real Life with Mike. And today I'm gonna to go over a, a little simple mod I did with my uh, with my power box. Now, it's not really a simple mod, it's actually quite complex, but it's simple for anyone that does electronics in general. It's still on the same concept, so it's pretty easy to do. Now, of course, my power box is a uh, amped outdoor 60 amp hour battery. Uh, it is quite large, but of course I am running fans, lights, and uh, partial on my live scope as well. So. That's why I need as big of a unit as I do. Uh, I also do a lot of overnight, so I mean, I need more battery uh, power supply for it. This one's quite simple. Like I say, it has the, uh, the voltage meter here. It has my USB power supply. And then it has these uh, two top poles for my 12 volt accessories. Now, the 12 volt accessory power poles, um, I'm gonna be running mostly on my, my hub light. Or if I need to, then I can always hook up my uh, live scope to it as well for secondary power supply when my 30 amp hour runs out. Now, the one real cool mod with this that I was gonna show you in this video is my remote system. So I ended up putting a remote system in the 12 volt power supply here. I'm just gonna hook up my clam light here. Of course, this clam light will be permanently installed in my hub, so I never have to worry about taking it uh, in and out. It's always gonna be permanently installed. Now, of course, these clam, uh, clam lights are usually powered just with this button. Worst thing is in the middle of the night, the bells start ringing and most likely you have a burbot on your line. Uh, trying to stand up, fumble around where everything is, pushing that little button on the top of your hub. If you're anything like me, I'm 5'5", that hub ceiling is quite high. Uh, they're also right above the hole. So I was trying to figure out a different way to power my uh, light without having to like flip a switch, uh, you know, reach or find my power box, flip a switch or hook it up. So what I decided is go to Amazon, picked up a remote, uh, a remote switch. It came with two different uh, remote controls and uh, two different remote sensors. Now I hooked one of these up in here and I'll open the box and I'll show you that as well. Uh, but basically I turn on my manual switch, that's gonna power the whole system. Now with this remote from wherever I am, I can turn it on. Now the greatest thing with this is the fact that I can attach this to my hoodie, I can put it, uh, attach it to my cot, uh, whatever else, it doesn't, we can put it wherever. The hard part is, will I lose this, this at some point? Probably, um, you, these little small things you lose all the time. Uh, I will have a secondary one in my box just in case, but nothing's better, middle of the night, bells ring, reach around for my remote, we have light. So that's a really, really unique thing that I added to my 12 volt power, uh, power supply. Don't have to, like I said, it's just uh, something that I decided to do as well. Now in the box here, move this a little closer. In the box here, of course, I have my uh, negative, negative, positive, positive. I am running my power supply into a uh, little fuse block here because of the fact that I'm gonna be running a uh, live scope and a couple other more expensive units, I wanna make sure that it's all protected. Of course, the power supply from the fuse blocks goes to all my switches, and then the switches will go then go to my voltage meter and my USB power supply as well, or the 12 volt poles. Now with this, uh, remote system. They are a little bit complicated because most of them don't come in English. So you have to maybe uh, take a look on YouTube. Uh, there is some other videos that kind of show the the wiring schematic for it. I'll kind of go over a basic schematic. So mine or my schematic that I use for this one here is going to be just a constant on and off. Okay, so on this uh, little switch panel here, of course, it's all labeled here on what you need to follow. Now in the schematics online, um, you can find a whole bunch of different schematics on on how to make it work. Now the easiest way is of course, uh, on this far pole here is gonna be your negative. The second pole is gonna be your positive. So negative from the battery, uh, positive from the battery or your fuse block. Then you gotta do a jumper wire from your positive to the second last one. Now that jumper wire is gonna change the schematics on here so that that remote control switch will operate. I'll just try this on. To stay on when you push on and to stay off when you push off. So if you, uh, if you don't put it this way, when you click the button, it will turn the power on, but only for a split second and it'll make your light flash. So uh, like I said, uh, first pole is gonna be your negative, second pole is gonna be your positive. You jump a wire to the fourth pole and then you use the third pole that's on this connector to go to your power supply. Uh, whatever you're gonna power, if you're gonna power a USB, if you're gonna power um, a 12 volt pole like I do here, uh, whatever you need to power, that's where the, the end power is gonna come out of. So like I said, it is a little bit confusing. It's a little bit complicated unless you really know what you're doing. Um, but I thought I'd just make like say a short video on how, uh, 
on how I built my power box. Let me know if you think that's a good idea um, or if there's any positives or negatives or any other additions that you've done to your power box. Of course, it is snowing outside. We've had a couple inches now. This is our first snow uh, out here in Winnipeg. So everyone's getting a little bit excited for the ice. I'm getting excited for the ice and that's why I'm starting to plan and get all this stuff ready. So when we're ready, I'm not fooling around with this kind of stuff. So until we see you on the ice, keep it real.